If my nuts are brown, it's time to bleach my anus tonight. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Anyway, speaking of bleached anuses, <clears throat> I want to talk about Star Wars some more. Um, I, I don't know, this has been bugging me. Ever since I watched Last Jedi, it's been bugging me. That and it gets me some views, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> I'm kidding, obviously, but... I don't know, Last Jedi has been bothering me. It has. In fact, the whole franchise, the whole new spin on the franchise is bugging me. Because it comes down to one basic concept. And that's disconnect. They're going out of their way to disconnect from the original series. The original, you know, concepts. And they're trying to pave in a new idea. Okay, fine, you could almost deal with that. It's been long enough. They want to kind of reboot the, the series. Cool. I'm I'm cool with that. But don't take it like they did with Ghostbusters, where they completely disconnected from the original and it was like, "Fuck that. We're gonna go this way," and there was nothing there. There was nothing of any interest there. No. Because what pisses me off about this new generation of people, these vagina men people, and I don't want to get into the feminism stuff, because there's legitimate feminism and then there's just deranged feminism, to me. Women should have equality, no questions asked. Women should have equal pay, no questions asked. That's legitimate feminism. What they've done with Ray, where they just give her powers... There's a disconnect there. As a viewer, now yes, okay, I'm male, but even females, there's a disconnect there. It's like watching someone win the lottery. Literally. Okay, great for them. I can't relate. Ray gets all these powers. I can't relate. Now you contrast that with Luke, when he's hanging upside down in the Bumble Cave, and you see the monster eating all this shit, and he's got blood in his face, and Luke is like, holy shit, <clears throat> he's got the scar on his face, although it was like a motorcycle accident, but that's neither here nor there. <clears throat> and then you look, and you see the lightsaber, and he reaches for it, and he, he can't get it, so he's like, oh shit, I gotta use the force, and he closes his eyes, and he like focuses, and meditates, and all of a sudden, boom, it comes right to his hand. That was great. As a viewer, you're going along the ride, you're... you're, you're <sighs> You're experiencing it with him. But yet, with Ray, it's a complete disconnect. It's like, oh, I got these powers, and yay, I can just force lift a whole shitload of rocks, where Luke couldn't do it at all. He could barely do it at all, and that's with Yoda strapped to his back. <laughs> okay. <sighs> okay. There's a disconnect there. There's a disconnect. That's the, that's the key word. You look at you look at this 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 flash Jedi bullshit. It's all disconnect. First off, it was disconnect from what JJ was doing <clears throat> completely. Now, I do tend to like JJ's movies, although he's a vagina man too. But you can kind of get over it. But I don't like this idea that, well, you didn't like it, so you're a bigot, or you hate women, or blah, blah, blah. Dude, it has nothing to do with it. I love Leia. I loved her. She's the only one who didn't have a real disconnect. <clears throat> there were two moments, at least, that I can think of off the top of my head that were not disconnected. Kylo's obsession with his grandfather, with the, the helmet... Which they did disconnect from this where he smashes it. But that's story progression. You lead into, like, okay, he's obsessed with his grandfather and now he's t coming into his own. That was good. That actually, I, I agree with that. Leia, there was no disconnect. She was a natural progression of her character. And it was great. <clears throat> but let's go, let's go back to, um, oh, I don't know. How about R2? Now, I'm sorry, R2 should get a fucking Oscar, he should get a Golden Glow, whatever the fuck they give out. That motherfucker deserves an award. You know why? Because every scene he was in, in the last two uh, movies, 
he stole the show. The fucking robot, beep, 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 but stole the fucking show. You can't deny that. Every, every scene R2 was in was arguably the best part of this new franchise. When he turns on, he's sitting there, he's like dead, he's conserving energy, and all of a sudden, blah, 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 he turns on, it's like, holy shit. And then the scenes with him and Luke, great. Fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. <clears throat> but yeah, there's a disconnect. They don't want you to care about R2. They want you to care about BB-8. Which, uh, BB-8's getting into the whole, you know, I don't even know what the hell it is. Like, like for example, you look at uh, certain Marvel characters like Apocalypse or Rogue or <clears throat> somebody who's just so ultra-powerful now you could say, well, like Superman, but actually Superman has weaknesses. He has a weakness to, well, kryptonite and magic. So, yeah, he's like super strong, but you got somebody who's a magic user, he could literally fuck him up. Or Rogue? I mean, just shy of shooting her into the sun, not much you can do. Apocalypse? Just shy of shooting him into the sun, not much you can do. <clears throat> you know, the Hulk? The Hulk is probably, like, in all of comics, he is the probably ultimately the bad guy, but he does have a weakness. He turns back into Banner. <laughs> okay. And Banner probably well actually not probably they kill him off. So he can he can die, which then ultimately means Hulk can die. Or, you know, the Hulk. Not the bro Hulk. Fuck him. Fuck that Amadeus Chow fucker with the little slicked hair and the little blah, 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 the, the, the homo vibe. I don't care about that stuff. Anyways, back to the story. <clears throat> so Again, it comes down to disconnect. They disconnected Luke. Which I can... Okay, fine. Fine. Now, there are some ways... And you don't even have to retcon this shit back in. JJ doesn't even have to come in and just, just you do you know, retcon. He doesn't have to even do that. Because a lot of this stuff has actually been set up. Now, they have to acknowledge it. And they have to run with it. That's the difference. I don't know if they're willing to do that. Because it's like, where do you go? So, okay, after after Last Jedi, Kylo Ren's now the ultimate bad guy in the universe. Okay. I guess. It explains nothing. It does nothing. But, hey, cool. Now, there's ways they could fix this. There are ways they could make Episode Nine phenomenal. And then, looking back, they can make this train wreck of Last Jedi seem like a fucking masterpiece. Now, it's still directed by a clown. It's still directed by somebody who, who can't write for shit. And it's still got this political bullshit, this, this deranged feminism bullshit into it. Where all the males are complete worthlessness. They are. Poe's an idiot. Luke is a crazy old hermit guy, which, okay, fine, if that, you know, you could maybe run with that on a certain level. Um, who else is, oh, you got Kylo, who's probably the only real strong male lead, minus the wimpiness and the, you know, fact that he's fucking dark side, which, again, if you're going to go with this deranged liberalism, that the deranged feminism, where all the men are on the dark side, he's, again, and this isn't just... You know, ref this isn't just some sort of, uh, like, reading into it. Th read some of the comments that Kennedy, whatever the fuck her name is, and, and it, it is this Ryan Rain, whatever the fuck his name is, idiot, was, was talking about. They were going out of their way to say, you know, they're, they're running around with shirts that says the, the force is, is female or some stupid shit. What? Okay, fine. Whatever. I don't even care. Tell me a good story. Tell me a good story. And then I might give a fuck. If you're going to tell me a story that's stupid, that doesn't apply to me, and yes, if you're a feminist, and you're going to do a feminist story, you got to make a feminist story that applies to me as a male so I can get it. If you're just going to sit there and say, oh, you're a bad guy because you don't care. Well, you're right. I don't give a fuck. Because it doesn't apply to me. It doesn't. Now... You have to make me 
and other people like me, and I don't mean, oh, bigot or a uh, uh, Trump supporter. I'm definitely not a Trump supporter. Fuck that shit. But you have to make the audience collectively give a fuck. You got women who don't even give a fuck. Now, yeah, you got you got your ultra-liberal feminist people who are deranged as fuck. Okay, they care. Your average liberal, they're like, that's a disconnect. They don't see it that way. They don't view it that way. They've never won the lottery. They have never won the lottery. Okay, they can't connect with her, Ray. <clears throat> you can't connect with her. No, I can connect with her, even though I'm not female. But if you tell me a story where I can go along the ride with her, then I've connected with her. Right now, Ray, with the exception of Daisy just being really cool, now, I mean, she might be an idiot in real life, I don't know, but just as far as her presence on screen and as far as what she does, that's the only thing that makes me care about her as a character. As far as her as a force user... I don't give a fuck. As far as her being the only, you know, last Jedi, don't give a fuck. As far as her going against Kylo, don't give a fuck. They've done nothing to invest me, the viewer. And basically all they did was take two whole movies to try to crap on my childhood. I mean, what are you, Michael fucking Bay? My, you know, between Transformers and Ninja Turtles that look hideous as fuck? <clears throat> I mean, seriously. They seriously, if there's a Star Wars ten, they should just hire Michael fucking Bay. Might as well. I mean, you might as well just make the circle complete. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my my childhood is just is just gone into like some sort of clinical rehab because it's been fucked and raped so much that it can't even handle reality anymore. My childhood just said, uh, I quit. <sighs> but there's ways to fix it. There's ways. One of the key ways is Snoke. Because here, this is what I was thinking about. First off, they need to bring him back. Now, there's ways to do this. Now, one of the fan theories was a that he is a Force vampire, or he is the Force incarnate, like the like the, the evil side of the Force manifested itself. Okay, that's maybe kind of a cool idea. <clears throat> so let's run with that for a second. Or let's say he's Plagueis. And he's not completely dead. Because, let's be honest, the good guys die, they turn into ghosts. Okay, and clearly Yoda had power to manipulate the physical world when he set the tree on fire. So, okay, maybe the bad guys have the same ability. Maybe they can actually come back physically if they so choose. <clears throat> Whatever. Let's say they can't. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Let's say Snoke was whatever that being was. Whoever that being was, that was Snoke. But that's not who Snoke is. Snoke is, let's say, Plagueis, or the Force Incarnate, which could very well be Plagueis too. And his consciousness went into this body. It possessed this particular body, the body of Snoke that being that you saw with like the little head wound and because he all fucked up so something happened something clearly happened to the guy he got fucked up now because what's cool about that concept in fact they did this in Stargate where Anubis basically they have this thing where it's called the sentient where your spirit can transcend the can blah, 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 transcend the body and become energy, the straight energy. Um, and it's kind of a cool idea. It's kind of like basically it's like dying and going to heaven, <clears throat> or you're still there but your physical body is no longer there. And in that scenario, they did they do have the ability to come back into physical form. Um, but what's cool about that? Is that, is that the other ascended beings, because the ancient people were trying to come into ascension. This is a Stargate, obviously. Um, <clears throat> our Stargate SG-1. Um, the ascended beings kind of went to a higher plane of existence. 
and some of them wanted to manifest himself and help human beings try to achieve that and help like this version of human beings so there was the original uh ancients and then we were kind of an offshoot genetically which is almost kind of biblical how you know god formed adam from the dirt which is basically you could argue he took dna from the soil cuz under certain conditions the dna can leach into the the soil and so it technically in a way if you read the bible god took dna that was here now it could be a ape a chimpanzee or some fucking thing a whale's dick who cares <clears throat> and manipulated it cuz i mean let's be honest we're you know as far as chromosome goes we're only like a couple off from like a cow okay or or a fucking dolphin or some shit <clears throat> so we're not that far off so you just manipulate a little bit blah, blah, and then you got a human being you know, it's that kind of a concept. So there was people before, and then there was a transition into what we are today. We're kind of a lesser version of what they were. But we still have the ability to transcend. That was the point. <clears throat> now what happens, when Anubis ascended, he was so wicked and evil that the other ascended beings sent him back. The problem is they couldn't physically send him all the way back. So he was this ghost, basically. He was this disembodied, basically a disembodied spirit. And he could take over people. Think of, basically, they would they would visualize it with like a black mist that would kind of like go up into the nostrils kind of a thing. And be like, and then he would, and he would be, he would possess them. Similar concept. Now, if you think about what happens to us as, just in general... Like, we have to go to sleep. We have to shut our consciousness off so that our body can repair. Because if we, for example, if we stay awake too long, we start to see shit. We start to go crazy. And it's a similar concept. So if you have Snoke, who's a physical spirit entity, who's taking over these these, these people. Well, actually, if you have Plagueis, who's taking over, let's say, Snoke, the physical person, Snoke... <clears throat> It would explain why he was all decrepit and kind of fucked up. Because his spirit is overtaking the physical flesh and it's destroying it. So he has to go from person to person. Kind of like Anubis did. Because after a while... Because he... In the story, Anubis went into one guy. This Russian uh, colonel. And he was only in there for maybe a week. And the guy ended up having like these lesions and cancer. And he, he was going to die once Anubis left. <clears throat> so... That, I think, is a cool concept. They could run with something like that. Where, um, because now think about how that would play out. Imagine if either the Force Incarnate, whatever, or Plagueis, whatever. Because if we go back to the concept of Anakin, Anakin was basically a Force birth. What if Anakin was supposed to be the vessel for... You know, the Snoke character. Well, I mean, actually, again, Snoke would be the actual physical character, but, like, Plagueis. He created Anakin to be the vessel for him to, to, for him to possess. Now, that kind of shit the bed in 3 when he got all fucked up and turned into Vader. Into a robot. <clears throat> or, you know, machine. Par mostly machine. That would be a really cool concept. And Snoke is and has always been manipulating Kylo, Kylo Ren, to be his next vessel. That would be a really cool little fucking twist in the nuts right there. Because think about it. It was complete disconnect that Luke Skywalker was going to kill him. What if Snoke was manipulating Luke to do that? And Luke was upset over that. That's why he became the hermit and, and shut himself off from the Force because he was basically being manipulated by the Force. Literally being manipulated by the dark side to kill Kylo. That would, that would paint a fucking picture that was a masterpiece. And it would make The Last Jedi look like an actual wonderment instead of the pile of trash that it actually is. 
you understand it? Just that little tweak, just that little, like, blah, blah, blah. okay, it ties it all together. Anakin's unknown birth. Why Luke went nuts and was going to kill him. Because think about how that would play out. Think about how that played out. Plagueis, or the Force, whatever, manipulated Luke to do this. He was also manipulating Kylo. Kylo wakes up, sees Luke standing over with the lightsaber, whole shit, blah blah blah, whole thing, sets it all into motion. You got a great fucking story right there. That makes Seven, like I said, look like a masterpiece. Now, if Snoke is manipulating everybody, okay, let's let's move on to Ray. And I've talked about this in other clips, but I'll quickly paraphrase it for now. I think Ray, instead of just being a random nobody, which is just stupid, because I can't relate to a random nobody, because there's a disconnect there. You tie her with the Skywalker family, or Obi-Wan's daughter, or Darth Sidious' granddaughter, or some shit, anything. You tie her with something from the past, she becomes completely relevant. And you're you're invested. You're like, oh shit, this is why she has all this power. Or this is why this is happening. Instead of this just random idiocy that, well, Kylo's getting really strong, so the force is, is raising up somebody else. Okay, that's great. But you don't not everybody just wins the lottery. So basically now think about this, if especially in the feminist derangement version of feminism. You got Kylo who's doing all the work becoming better and better and evil and evil and Ray's reaping the war reward. So basically it's like take from the one, give to the other. And I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Let's not even get into that. I don't want to talk about that because you know, it's a hot button issue. I don't give a fuck, quite, quite frankly. Let's talk about stuff that matters. I can't relate to Ray. I don't know what it's like to win the lotto. So, <clears throat> what if, and I've said this before, what if, what if, what the fuck if, what if Ray is Kylo's sister, her his twin sister? See how it ties in? Luke, Leia, twins. Leia was supposed to, in the actual canon that never became, she was supposed to have twins too, a boy and a girl. It would make sense. It would completely make sense. Now you say, well, in the first, in in seven, you see, you know, she, you know, the ship flies off, blah blah blah, and the the parents, and they they give you a glimpse, and you know, blah blah blah. Okay. Now you may have to do a little ret retcon with this, but um, what if her parents are actually Han Solo and fucking Leia? Think about it. Think about it. She's on the Millennium Falcon, because her dad owns the fucking Millennium Falcon. Why not? Okay, and somebody steals it from Han. She's on board. They fly her to the planet, drop her off, and then it would explain why the Millennium Falcon was on the same planet she was on. Why she found the fucking thing. Okay, it would. It would explain why Han took off because he's looking for the Millennium Falcon to find a clue where his daughter's at. It would make sense, especially after Kylo has been manipulated by Plagueis, or the Force, to become an asshole. And now his daughter's missing. Think about that. And then when you see that hug between Han and Leia, holy fuck, paints a whole new picture. And an amazing picture. Just throwing it out there. Now you say, well, they showed clips and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but she was a child. She's reflecting on the, the idea of her, quote-unquote, parents have abandoned her. Why? Oh, my God. So she's reflecting on the situation, which would mean she's probably not remembering it correctly. Now, what if they kind of switched it over where, okay, you see the ship that flew off, and then you actually see what really happened, and it's a Millennium Falcon, and it didn't just fly off. It just kind of, like, flew, like, straight. It went, like somewhere else on the planet. They didn't leave the planet. They, I mean, yeah, granted, that's a little retrocon, but you have to, at this point, you have to connect her with something that I give a fuck about. Just some random babe who shows up with force powers is stupid. It's stupid. 
It makes no sense. There's no connect there. And again, even females, there's no connect there. I've been watching numerous females on YouTube talk about this, and there's no connection there. They cannot relate to her. She's supposed to be this feminist beacon of hope in this deranged feminist bullshit. And again, I'm not, when I say deranged feminist, I'm not saying feminism is deranged. I'm saying there's a deranged variant of it. And they're showing this, the people who are in charge. Because it's like, oh, blah, 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 you know, they're going off the fucking deep end with it. Instead of, you know, giving us real feminism, powerful women that are important. Like Leia. Leia is a great example of feminism. Ray is not. Leia, well, I mean, technically you could say that everything she had was essentially for naught because she wasn't, well, I mean, she was, I mean, she was a princess, but she wasn't technically a princess. So all of her political power basically was kind of for naught because, I mean, technically she was a princess because her mother was the queen. But obviously once everything shit to bed, she went to live with the other people and became a queen. So, I don't know, whatever. But everything up to that point, she basically earned. She basically, you know, did what she had to do. And that's why her story is great. Ray's story is not great. It's not. It's it's simply not. It started off kind of cool, where it's like, okay, she's interesting. She's a scavenger. She's, you know, doing the stuff. She's trying to survive. I'm kind of kind of interested Daisy's really good at what she's doing. She's kind of, you know, she's got a cool look. I want to see her be badass with the lightsaber. You had me to a point. Like, J.J. reeled me in, and then this this Last Jedi just... Blah, blah, you know. I don't know. But, I mean, think about that. Now, you add those two things with the whole Plagueis thing. Now, one of the other arguments is, how does Snoke... Supreme Leader, who is as powerful as he was, lifting Ray up, throwing her around, and force raping her, whatever it was he was doing to her. How does he not recognize or even hear the fucking lightsaber rattling around next to him? Now, my my thought earlier totally explains that. Because guess what? Plagueis doesn't give a fuck about Snoke. Snoke is just wasted tissue, wasted flesh. So you kill Snoke, who cares? He just finds somebody else. He then, and maybe, 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 Snoke, or excuse me, Plagueis, or the Force, whatever, now takes over Kylo. It would make more sense. It would make a more compelling story that he's manipulated him. He is the new and Because that would, that would bring the connection of why he cares about his grandfather the way he does with the helmet and, like, I'm going to avenge you, my grandfather, or whatever the fuck it was he was saying. Because Anakin was supposed to be the vessel, he got fucked up, and, you know, it is what it is. Now, I think it's a little bit of bullshit that he would manipulate Luke, but it would, it would, I don't want to say it would necessarily make sense, but it would make more sense out of the bullshit that we were given. That Luke is just, like, he spent the entire original trilogy saying, oh, I believe there's good in my father, I've sensed it. You know, he's he's like the second worst evil prick in the entire universe that we know of, at least. And, yeah, no, I'm gonna go risk, risk my life. <sighs> risk my life, because I believe there's good in him. But yet his nephew, he's like, um... Well, he's kind of... I'm sensing him bad in him. Now I gotta go kill him. It makes no fucking sense, dude. That makes zero sense at all. None. No. Now, he's being manipulated. It would explain why he cut himself off from the Force. Because he's being manipulated by the evil side of the Force. Makes sense. And it would make complete sense. It would. It might be, and what I was talking about with Ray and the, being Han's daughter. First off, that would be really cool, by the way. It just, it would be. It would make that scene where she's in the cave and she's like, you know, who are my my parents? And you see her. Which is very similar to Luke seeing himself and Vader. Now, 
what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, what did the original mean? I mean, essentially, I always took it as, you know, quote-unquote, the failure of the cave. The failure of the cave was that he killed Vader, which means he was killing a part of himself. And it was always that... <clears throat> There was always that theme where, okay, like, he lost his hand and it shows the black glove. Like, every time he did something like that, he lost a part of himself. So, how that applies to what Daisy had going on there and Ray, I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Like, who, who is my family? And they show just her. I don't know. Doesn't make sense. Anyways. <clears throat> but yeah. God damn it. Excuse me. Anyways. Yeah, there's, like I said, there's a huge disconnect. In this series right now. And I understand they want to distance themselves from the past. I get it. But you can't distance yourself from the past. Again, look at Ghostbusters. You distance yourself from the original series... And people don't want that. People don't want that. People want the nostalgia. People want to have that connection. Now, again, Ghostbusters would have been great if the, the, four, the four women were the daughters or granddaughters of the original cast. That would have been phenomenal. That would have been great. Even if they went off and did all this feminist bullshit they wanted and men are stupid and women are great, fine. I don't even have a problem with that. And I don't have a problem that they were four women, either. <clears throat> but what I have a problem is, is they basically shit over the, the canon, they shit over the story, they shit over the franchise. You know, and you can't do that. There are people coming in with, this is part of their history, part of their, their existence, part of who they are. Ghostbusters is a cultural phenomenon. And I mean, like, worldwide culture, not just, you know, American culture. This is a big deal. I mean, it's a big fucking deal. Star Wars is a big fucking deal. You can't just sit there and say, well, that was all good, but uh, yeah, this is better. No. No. It's not. It's, it's not. And, again, disconnect. You disconnect Luke. You, you disconnect everybody that matters. No, I... I have to watch it again, but I think they did okay with Han coming back. I think he was good. Now, his death, I get it. It had to happen. And yes, it had to be Kylo to do it. It makes sense. I can dig that. I can get behind that. Same thing with Luke. A lot of people are pissed off Luke died. But it makes sense. Because he's the Obi-Wan character. He's going to die. He's going to come back as a Force ghost. It's just how it's supposed to be. That's that's how it's supposed to be. You know? It is. That's how it's supposed to be. Um, now, I don't know. This could be kind of... Co I don't know. It would be kind of cool or kind of stupid. I don't know. Just something that came to me. What if the final battle is between... Ray and Kylo, but they're both being possessed by Luke and and uh, Plagueis. So there's like like double. There's almost like a spiritual war going on between the two of them. That could be kind of cool. I don't know how that would work out, but it would be kind of interesting. So you got the two physically going with the lightsabers, and you've got this this mind mind battle, almost like uh, Charles Xavier kind of a thing on the astral plane kind of existence with Luke and, and Plagueis. That would be kind of cool, too. I don't know. That could be interesting. It could be stupid. I don't know. It depends on how they do Like, J.J. could handle that, I think. J.J. could do a good job with that, but I don't know. Again, that just kind of came to me, but whatever. Because, again, you kind of got the mind, body, spirit thing going on. Um, well, like I said, I mean, let me just recap. I mean, you explain... Anakin's strange birth, which they've never explained. He just, no, oh, the many chlorines brought him into existence, which is just fucking stupid. <clears throat> Plagueis bringing him back, bringing him into existence. 
to become his vessel would be fucking awesome. And the only again, the only reason it didn't happen is because he got his shit cut off. He got his dick cut off, literally. Now plug this ain't gonna be Jen to nobody with no dick. I tell you that much. I mean basically Vader's a eunuch, so it is what it is. You realize that? Yeah, she is a eunuch. You think think about that. <clears throat> He's a fucking eunuch, dude. <laughs> hey, you know what? Everybody's got to have a hero, you know? <laughs> Anyways, back to the point. It would explain that. It would be a great explanation. He wants him as a vessel. He got fucked up. Fine. So who's next? Luke? Well, you can't do that because, you know, it just... You Whatever. I mean, I don't know, maybe you can make the argument. But Luke is kind of old by then. So I was like, eh. You know, you got Anakin in his 20s. You got Kylo in his 20s. Yeah. You could. I mean, by the time it all happened... I don't know. Luke wasn't... Actually, Luke really wasn't strong enough. <clears throat> and plus he had Vader in... Or, excuse me, he had uh, Obi-Wan and uh, Yoda kind of protecting him. So Snoke, or excuse me, Plagueis couldn't really get to him. I mean, he could. I mean, he basically could use Palpatine to get to him, but he had to turn to the dark side first, and then he technically didn't. Or maybe, maybe, well, maybe he did, because in a way, it seemed like he did kind of turn to the dark side a little bit. So I don't know. Because <clears throat> he did go to strike him down. He didn't actually physically strike him. So I think I think what it is, it's almost like Highlander, or it's like there can only be one. you got to physically strike him. Even though he went to strike him, Vader stopped him. But Palpatine was still giggling, like a little schoolgirl. Like, hey, 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 hey. He was still giggling. As the two of them started... And then Luke started going all dark side when he started bashing him with the lightsaber. So I don't know. I don't know. Because, again, I think the point is there's a little bit of good in everybody and a little bit of bad in everybody. And you put that with the whole Plagueis Force thing. So, I don't know. But if that's the case, then, then who is the incarnation of the good side of the Force? You say, well, it's Ray. Well, no. Ray's already, Ray has lineage. Her parents are nobody. <laughs> okay. So if Plagueis, or the Force Incarnate, Snoke, whatever. So I don't know. I don't know how that would work out. Because it would seem like if one's doing it, then there has to be another. So there'd have to be a physical version of the good side of the Force. That's been manifest. And no, it's not. Again, it's not Rey. So I don't know if that I don't know if you could really go with that because again that's one of the theories that the force the evil side of the force the dark side manifests itself into a physical form Snoke and that's why he's all fucked up or he or it, or it manifests itself as an actual being and then took over Snoke which could it could work because he clearly was manipulating Kylo the whole time because she didn't really get to see that and it's kind of troublesome. Um, I don't know. But you put it all into perspective. If if they change those two things, they bring back Snoke, they acknowledge that he is Plagueis, and he's come back from the dead, or that he's, he's this disembodied spirit that possesses people, and they even tie it into Anakin's birth, and then they give Ray an actual lineage. Because I think Kylo was fucking with her personally. In fact, I don't even know if it was Kylo. Maybe it was Snoke fucking with him to fuck with her. Because they, they had a little threesome going on there. Whether he was connecting the two of them. Because again, the guy that fucking powerful is not going to know the lightsaber. I think he allowed it to happen because what it did... What it did is it put Kylo over the edge. Because he was kind of wishy-washy, he's got that little, little, little cry eye, you gonna cry, little Kylo with little tear in his eye. Okay, that bullshit, and then he completely went to the dark side at that point. Of course, you know, killing his father, killing fucking Han Solo, one of the greatest fucking characters ever created. You know, that had nothing to do with any of it. 
He's still going to poo-poo about the shit. Okay. Whatever. So what if... What if... Um... The force, whatever... Whatever that being is that was taking over the physical Snoke... I mean, Snoke is expendable. Because, again, if this, if if that spirit can just take on anybody, again, Kylo's, the, the vessel being raised up, he will be possessed by this being. I don't know, I think that could totally work. I think that could absolutely work, and I think it would be brilliant. Because, again, you go back and watch this original, this new trilogy, and you watch uh, 7, 8, and 9, and you, you have all that context... That's going to look awesome. That's going to be an amazing fucking trilogy. If they're going to just go on where, oh, Ray and him have to go at it, and Luke comes as a ghost, and, hey, Ray, how you doing? You don't really need to learn anything, because we're just going to give you more force powers, and it's all cool. Okay, see ya. That's going to be fucking stupid. It's wishy-washy, and it's bullshit. You do what I said, you got yourself a fucking classic here. You got yourself a master fucking piece here. You do. You... Dude, if they did those two things, it would completely turn this entire franchise around. Like, to the point of complete gloriousness. Now, are there some plot holes? I don't know. But how about less plot holes than what, what they gave us with Last Jedi? And that's a fact. Now, again, it's, st it's still directed by a clown because... Half the shit made no sense. You know, and don't get me wrong, I appreciate some of the humor. I appreciate the concept of the humor. I just don't think the guy is very funny. I don't think he's... Ryan, whatever the fuck his name is. I don't, he's just not a very funny dude, and especially directing it, he's not a very... He's, he's not a comedy director, basically. Um... But there were a couple funny parts. I laughed at a couple things. And a couple things I kind of cringed at. Like the whole milk thing. I was like, what the fuck? But like, when Leia looked at uh, 3PO and said something like, don't give me that look or wipe that look off your your face. And it's the, obviously it's the same look. But he, it was funny because he has that look. He's like, what? <laughs> he has he has that look, but he has it all the time. So it's, it's abs that was funny. That was a funny joke. That was funny. Um, I did, I admit, I kind of laughed when he took, they, they build up to this, 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 like, oh, she's going to hand him the lightsaber, and it's his father's, and it, or the one he had, and he lost his hand, and blah, 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 and then he takes it, looks at it, and goes, huh, and throws it over his shoulder. I admit, I kind of laughed at that. Because, like, they build it up, and it's like, eh, fuck it, I don't care. I mean, it's out of character, and it's stupid, and doesn't really play, but it, I kind of laughed, because it was funny, you know? And then there was some moments that were funny. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. There's a couple. There were a couple good moments. I can't remember them, but you know. But the problem is the humor just doesn't really work because if you look at like the original trilogy was pretty funny, especially the droids. Like when they're running through the desert, and and three peels bitching at him, bitching at R two. And like that time when uh, R two and Luke are heading to the swamp to go see. Uh, and he's like, he's like, yes, R2. That's funny. That's that's funny. It, R2's bleep, 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 bleep. He's like, yes, R2. That's funny. Because you don't know what R2's saying. <laughs> and it's just, that's that's funny. It, it, it's funny. Or like when, uh, when 3 is like, you know, just you rethink playing that message from Master Luke. That's funny. It, it, it's funny the way it played out. It's, it's, it's simple humor, but it's funny humor. Even in the uh, 1, 2, and 3, where it's like, oh, oh, don't worry, Padme, we got 3PO with this. Now, I'm going to argue that 3PO, like, a lot of people say, oh, this, this is the story of Vader, or it's the story of Luke, or now it's the story of Rey. No, it's not. It's literally the story of R2. If R2, at the very beginning, did not go out there and fix that ship, none of this would have happened. So when you hear the term "May the Force be with you," with you the fourth Force is with three PO. What if he is? What what if three PO is the manifestation of the good side of the Force? <laughs> you got Darth Plagueis, this this 
guy who can come back from the dead, and you got three. You, you got uh, R two. You got R two. Who's who's the physical? That would be. I don't know. It'd be kind of funny actually when you think about it. Because think about all the stuff that R two has done. He is he is literally like the, the patriarch of of the Skywalker family. I mean, he has basically done everything he can to make these people survive. If, if it was not for R2, none of them would, would be alive today. You realize that. None of them. I mean, shit, Padme would have, would have got blown up in the ship. There's no, there's no Anakin. There's no her and him and Luke and Leia. There's none of that. The whole series would be shit if R2 hadn't done what he did. R2 is a fucking hero, dude. He is the literal hero. It ain't Luke, it ain't this one, it ain't that one. Oh, Ray's the hero. No, Ray ain't shit. It's fucking R2. And what do they do? They crap on R2. They do nothing with R2. Oh, it's old BB-8. Because we want to sell some shitty toys. Dude, I'm sorry. The art direction of the toys look like shit. First off, Hasbro, you got to get better fucking models. You got to get better fucking toys. Your toys look like shit. Okay, they look like absolute garbage. Now, they have come up with some newer ones that are better. They look better. They're still garbage. The, the facial thing, it's just... Uh, <clears throat> don't get me started with that shit. I, I, lo <laughs> I love these videos on YouTube where Numbnut was saying, Oh, Rose is going to be one of the most sought-after characters and blah, blah, blah. And everybody goes to the local Toys R Us or goes to the local store and there's like 50 Rose characters sitting on the shelf. Ain't nobody buying that shit. <laughs> nobody's buying it. Like, oh, Ray, everybody's going to buy the Ray. And she's like number two in the Black Series. And you see all these zero two, zero two, zero two, zero two. There's like 50 of them. And it's like nobody's buying that shit. Because you got to understand, like, uh, Toys R Us specifically, they've got their their back warehouse is filled with this shit. They they bought so many expecting this, and it just is sitting there. I mean, they're they're actually having sales where like, you buy them for a dollar. These are like I don't know twenty dollar figures or some shit. When they're crap for twenty bucks, by the way. They had, they were showing d deals that were like buy one get one free. Two for ten, or two for twenty, or whatever it was. Some of them were like going for a dollar. They had one deal that was buy one get four free. Although that was the uh, that was the Skylander or not was Skylanders, whatever those kind of toys, whatever those little chibi ones with the bug eyes and stuff. <clears throat> and of course, then they got the 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 feminist. Uh, I forget what they're called. There's they're something like feminist. Whatever they're 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 fem dolls basically. There's like a whole series of them, and I'm not knocking them, but that's what they're that's what they are. That's what they're called. They're like I forgot the exact name, but it's like you know the fem feminist series or some fucking shit. And is again those are kind of chibi as well with the blah, 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 the faces and the bug eyes. They're not selling. There's whole the whole shelf full of that garbage. No, uh, it's kind of funny in a sad sort of way. Now, like, I have, I remember, I remember the old woman and I, we, we started collecting when, uh, the new series, came, the new, uh, trilogy came out, uh, one, two, and three, we started collecting those, and the old woman went nuts, she was going on, like, eBay and shit to get Yoda, we paid a couple bucks for Yoda, we paid a couple bucks for, uh, Vader, I've got the entire set of, like, the first one, so, again, I, I, Kind of, I get it. I like, I like collecting those and stuff. Although I should, I should probably start collecting some more. I was actually tempted to collect some more. Like I wouldn't mind getting Ray. I wouldn't mind getting Kylo. I wouldn't mind getting a couple of them and actually have like this the a decent set. Um, you know, certain like I don't know. But again, you look at them and you look at their 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 models and you look at their design. I don't like the design. I understand that the AT AT whatever 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 they call them now. Um, I get that they look junkier, and they're supposed to look like scrap metal, because it's just, things aren't the way they used to be, they're not as pristine, and they're just kind of like this weird, I get that, but it doesn't play out as far as like, oh yeah, I want that sitting on my shelf, it looks like a piece of shit, now you, you contrast it with an actual AT-AT, 
that looks cool sitting on your shelf. You know, or an ATST looks pretty cool. I don't know. It just it doesn't work. I would much rather have a freaking R2 than I would a BB-8. You know, and I don't. I'm not knocking BB-8, but R2's still the way to go. You know. But I mean, seriously, think about the disconnect. Three PO disconnect. Um, Chewy disconnect. Chewy's done nothing. They've done nothing with Chewy. He's he's made bit rolls in the last two. He is somebody they should be doing a shitload with. He should be part of the main franchise going forward. You know, they they did nothing with Akbar. Except blow him out of fucking you know, blow him out into space. They they've done nothing with some of these characters. And let's talk about diversity. Where the fuck is Lando? The fuck is Lando? They don't even mention Lando. I mean, you want to talk about, you know, bigots? Where the fuck is he? He's like one of the most iconic black guys ever. Where the fuck is he? Well, you know, what? You, you, you had a quota? You can only have, like, one, one black main hero? I mean, come on. I mean, whatever, man. Again, where is Lando? Even if you replaced him with somebody. Even if you got a replacement Lando. Where is Lando? I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, I have no faith in this uh, Han Solo series. First off, the title is just stupid. Star Wars, a Han Solo story or some What are that? This is stupid. Just idiotic. And if your title's that idiotic and you got this clown as a director, it's going to be a joke. The whole thing is going to be a joke. They'll probably turn him in. They'll probably have a gay relationship with Chewie or some fucking thing. Or he'll be banging Lando in the ass or some fucking thing. It'll be some fucking political bullshit. Agenda-driven bullshit. They're not going to tell a good story. It, yeah, oh, okay, even if, even if Han dabbled in homosexuality or some fucking shit, who cares? You know? It's going to be something stupid. It's going to be some stupid bullshit, political bullshit. They're not going to try to tell a good story. First off, you know who would have made a good Han Solo? Like a, like a you know, a replacement? Joe Flanagan would have made a great freaking uh, Han Solo. He would have. He would have made a great Han Solo. But, hey, what do I know? Let's get a guy with a square fucking head. He looks like a fucking square head. His head looks like a fucking jello mold. That came out of a dish. You literally take it up, bloop, and it's got that shape, and it looks like a fucking jello mold. He's got a fucked up head. Nothing against the guy, but it doesn't look like Han. He looks nothing like Han. He doesn't even come close to looking like Han. Joe Flanagan looks like Han. You, you, you Google his ass, and you say, you know, hey, I can see it. Especially when you, especially the way he talks. He's got that Han, he's got that... Harrison Ford kind of mouth that the way he, the way he talks, you know, he talks like this in his mouth. It would work. That's all I'm gonna say on that. But no, whatever, guys. You go, you go the route you want to go. You tell your story that nobody gives a fuck about. I mean, seriously, if anybody gave a damn, they'd be out buying the fucking toys. They ain't buying the toys. Obviously, the franchise people aren't giving a fuck about. Now those toys are sold every single time. Like, you have collectors who quickly try to get the stuff. You got some collectors who quickly try to get these new series toys, and they're sitting on the shelves. They paid big bucks to get Ray. They paid big bucks to get some of these characters. And they're all sitting on the shelves at discount. Now, I can't say that I know for a fact of this, but I think that, may, I think that was like the first time that's ever happened. No, I don't know what the toys were like before. I remember when I was a kid, the toys were always off the shelf. Like, you'd never find a Vader. You'd never find a Luke Skywalker. Or a Yoda. Again, I remember when we went to the store. Again, it was we were talking one or two stores, so locally, but, you know, whatever. So, the... What's the word? The, 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 the sample... Size is very limited, but again, you go there, and you couldn't find a Yoda. You couldn't find the characters. We had to go online. We had to go on eBay. We had to go on uh, 
Amazon and different places like that to find these fuckers and pay a couple bucks for them. Like, I remember my mother was sitting there bidding, and she was, because uh, she was like one of those hardcore bidders who would sit there and keep refreshing every 15 seconds. We're going to get, she, <laughs> she looked at me, she, she looked at me, we're going to get these bastards. Or, I'm going to outbid these bastards or something like that. And she would, man. She, dude, she would, she would remortgage the house to get a fucking uh, bid. Like, she'd wait right up to the end, and all of a sudden just, bloop, you know. Because there, there was a way to do it, you know. And we paid good money for these. So I've got the entire, like I said, i got the entire original, uh, I can't remember if it was Series 1. Well, technically they were all kind of the same, so there may have been like a Series 1 and a Series 2 and a Series 3. But it's different with the toys. Like, I don't know if there was an entire specific Episode 2 series. I think it was all just one... Because, again, the toys come out in a series. Like, there's, like, four or five in the first wave, two or three in the next wave, so on and so forth. Um, but, yeah, we... Trying to get Yoda, because Yoda came with this, like, little... What are that little wheelchair? Is a little floaty wheelchair he had. And then Vader... Um, had Mace Windu. We had... We got them all, dude. Because my mother and I were going nuts. Because, like, she was going nuts. She was buying stuff... She was buying stuff. She was buying for me. She was buying like books and like I got the I got the original book, um, episode one book, or was it two? Whatever. I don't think she made it for three. I don't. I think she died before three came out. I don't know. Like she would. She'd love this new series. Well, not love it, but she'd love to be you know excited for it like everybody else. I don't think. I don't think she liked the direction that they took it. I don't, you know... She'd be pissed about Han. Luke would probably be, up, you know, upsetting. I mean, it's upsetting to everybody, so... It, even Hamill was upset. Dude, that look, he gave fucking Ryan, Ryan, Ruin, whatever the fuck his name is. I was going to call him Ruin because he sucks. That look he gave him at the premiere, like, he literally wanted to punch him right in the dick. <laughs> that was a classic classic look i mean seriously go go youtube that shit that oh my god dude the look on his face absolutely priceless i mean that is a man who was disgusted with what they did now i'm sorry you know listen i get it lucas got upset over the original the, the uh second trilogy that he did because fans didn't like it and there was a lot to like and there was a lot to dislike. But at least it kept relatively true to the franchise and relatively true to the characters, even though it was... I mean, let's be honest. The very first episode, episode one, you clearly see what he was trying to do. He was trying to sell toys in video games. Pod Racer, for example. was Well, there was a video game, Pod Racer, the N64 version. So he was clearly trying to do it for marketing reasons. So a lot of that stuff. But hey, you know what? I, I could deal with the marketing over the political bullshit. Now don't misunderstand me when I say that. Because Star Wars has always been very political. There's concepts of war. There's concepts of like Vietnam and World War One and World War Two And the way, you know, there there's like even Nazi references and... There's that kind of stuff, and that's kind of cool, where it's like, if you're just, you're not really paying attention to it, it's like, oh wow, these guys are really bad, and yeah, they kind of hearken to, you know, the Nazis, where you have the stormtroopers, and they're all just like, marching in order, and, you know, that kind of stuff. But this blatant stuff, I don't, see, I, didn't, I like it when it's subtle, you can put your political stuff in there when it's subtle and it's something that I don't have to think about it. It's just like, oh, okay, cool. You know, or like you look back and you're like, you know, like, did you know kind of a moment. I like that. I can deal with that stuff. But this constant, oh, by the way, yes, let's talk about abuse of animals. Clearly, because there's animals and there's scars on them and they abuse the animals. And I, I don't know. I mean, listen, I don't have a problem with that because, you know, now, yeah, I might kick the dog once in a blue moon when he gets under my feet, but I'm not going to sit there and whip his ass to the point of, like, scarring him. 
You know? Although, if he chews up any more cords, I may kick him in the fucking head a couple times. That's just neither here nor there. I'm partly kidding. I wouldn't do that, but... I choked the shit out of him. No. I don't want to get into that. No, actually, I did. I, I did choke Ollie that one time. Well, because he was biting me. He literally was biting me. He was a vicious dog. He was. He had a vicious streak. And you sit there and say, no, 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 no. No, he had a vicious streak. He did. In fact, his father had to be put down because of it. Or like Lucy he did not have a vicious streak at all. You know, Mr. Boots, he did not have a he did not have a vicious streak. He, I mean, he plays rough. He'll 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 obviously play with his mouth and you know he'll bite like that. But he don't he won't bite you. Ollie would bite you. He would bite strangers. He, in fact, he's bit he actually bit people. You know, they come up and like, hey, how you doing? And they're petting him, and he's like, and he bites them, nips at them. He was the son of a bitch. He even bit my mother a couple times. But oh, uh, whatever. But yeah, that one time, I remember he grabbed my hand. He grabbed my right hand, and he was like, started shaking it like, like you, like you would like a, 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 a rabbit, like trying to kill it. And he wouldn't let go of my hand. I had to like literally punch him with my other hand, like punch him in the head to get him to stop, because he wouldn't, he wouldn't let go. And I'm trying to pull, and I'm like, and there's blood, and it's just, I had to hit him. I had to physically hit him to get him to stop. Which then kind of set into motion where it's like every time I see him, it's like, I just, fuck you. Okay. It was one of those things. So he's like, well, you, you were mean to him. No. I was mean to him after the fact. I mean, yeah, okay, maybe, you know, maybe as a kid you play a little rough with him, but it wasn't like that. I mean, shit. Lucy never did that. She liked to play around a little bit, you know. No, obviously you're not, I don't know. There's a fine line between rough playing with an animal versus he's just completely fucking crazy. I don't know. Whatever. I don't want to talk about that. But, like, I don't, you know, it is what it is. I could even deal with that. I could, okay, fine. So you got the little slavery kids. Fine. The little sweatshop slavery kids. That's great. You got the animals who were abused. Fine. I don't even have a problem with that, because I think most everybody can get on board with that. Slavery's not cool, and abuse of animals is not cool. Even if you're not a, you know, even if you don't like kids, which I don't, and, I mean, collectively, you know. And you're not an animal lover, you're not an animal supporter, but, you know, you don't want to see something get abused. So, yeah, okay, fine. That, that's fine. But then you throw in all the other bullshit, and it's like, it's too much. It, it literally is far, far, far too much. It's a galaxy far, far away. This is a galaxy that should be far, far away. You know, make it subtle. Like, oh, we love women. Okay, we're feminists, and we love women, and it's all about the women. You know what? They did do that. They did it with Leia. General fuck Leia. They did that. They don't need to constantly, you know, go over the fucking deep end. They don't need to go over the Niagara Falls in the bucket and just go all in. They don't need to do that because whatever little point you were trying to make, you've made in spades. And then you've gone above and beyond that to the point where it's blatant, where it's like, oh, look, here it is again. Don't forget. And that takes away from the story as far as I'm concerned. That completely takes away from the story. Again, there's a disconnect there. You know? Because, again, I believe in good quality feminism. I don't believe in this, this crazy, deranged, <clears throat> over-the-top bullshit feminism. Where it's like, every male is bad, and blah, 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 and anybody with a penis is bad, and blah, blah, blah. That, that to me, is a little too much. You know? It is. No, sure, are, are old white men the greatest thing since sliced bread? Probably not. Old white men have given us wars. Old white men have given us problems. Listen, I'm for that. I get I get that. I'm on board with that. But it's like, you know, I don't know. But again, use use Leia. But again, you again you look at you look at Ray. She was given the fucking lottery and you don't get to see her train. She didn't even train. She literally was training herself for fuck's sake. In The Last Jedi. She literally trained herself. 
And I'm sorry, that's stupid. That's stupid because like, oh, you can't admit that you need help or, I mean, she well she did. She went and like, I need you to train me, and he's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. well fine, I'll do it myself. Okay, if they had played it like that, it would have been fine. But they really didn't. It was just like, okay, you know, I don't know that. It's bothersome that that's what I took away from it. Instead of it being a really cool moment where most of the most of the movie, most of that sequence should have been Luke training her. Just like Yoda trained him. Because you went on the ride, like I said, he's up in the bumble cave and then he does, you know, he he pulls the, he pulls the lightsaber out. And then he goes and he's jumping and climbing ropes and he's, you know, focusing and blah, blah, blah. And he's trying to lift it up and he can't lift up the, the R-Wing and, or the, whatever that, not, whatever, whatever that fucking vehicle was. X-Wing, not R-Wing. <clears throat> he can't lift it up and, oh, it's impossible and yes, it's impossible and it's where you fail. Okay, all that stuff. You go along the ride and it's like, you feel for him. You feel for him because he's 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 brash. He's a whiny little bitch, and it's like he wants to do it, but he just he can't bring himself to that point, and blah blah blah, and it, 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 it. all of a sudden Ray comes along and is like, "Hi, hey. oh, you need those rocks moved? Okay, bloop. <laughs> you know, you need that ship lifted? Bloop. There it is. It's like, come on, man, take me for the fucking ride. Don't don't take me for a ride. Take me on a ride. There's a difference." And that's one thing they really got to fix. That's one thing that JJ's going to have to fix in 9. You've got to make me care about this character again. Because I don't. At this point, I don't even care. The only thing that's keeping me mildly afloat, as far as Ray character goes, is the fact that Daisy's doing a hell of a job with it. The facial expressions and just the... She's got a cool facial look, and it's just... I want to see her succeed in that regard. The character itself is just... There's nothing there. There's no substance to the character. She's just a random nobody. There's no connection. Now, if she's, you know, somebody's daughter or granddaughter, even Palpatine, you'd be like, okay, cool. He was ultra bad. She's ultra good. That's very cool. Or it's Obi-Wan. Okay, it's Obi-Wan. There's a connection. It's like, I'm taking my love for Obi-Wan and I'm, you know, giving it to her and she can run with it and become her own thing. That's awesome. Or she's Han's daughter, which is even better, I think. Makes sense, okay? And then and the two of them are brother and sister, so there's like a connection there. Instead of the disconnect. It all comes back to the disconnect. They're trying to disconnect the, the fucking viewer from 40 years of history. 40 years of greatness. And yeah, fine, I'll even count the, the trilogy, the one, two, and three episodes. Which they weren't inherently bad and that, this isn't just looking back although I mean compared to the last fucking Jedi they were fucking masterpieces but like I'm sorry episode one I've gone through this before but I'm going to do it again for the sake of this clip episode one should have been phenomenal it should have been awesome let me think about it you've got young Obi-Wan played, played by Ewan McGregor that's great. He's, he, he's a good Obi-Wan. My mind can get around that, okay? Yeah, my mind can understand that the original Obi-Wan is an old guy who died. Okay, so now we got young Obi-Wan. I can get behind that. I can say, okay, he is Obi-Wan. Like, if they do more with him and they bring him back, he is Obi-Wan. Awesome. You know? They're one and the same to me. This guy who's going to play Han, they're not one and the same. It just, my mind can't say, oh yeah, this is the new Han. You know. It's just, no, bullshit. You know. <sighs> Whatever. But again, think about where, where episode one, you had young Anakin Skywalker. Okay, that should have been good. Of course, Jake Lloyd, whatever the fuck. Dude, Jake Lloyd's mom had him been banging somebody in Hollywood because that kid got a lot of freaking roles. Jingle all the fucking way with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad. Are you kidding me? His mom had him been banging the entire Hollywood cast and crew. I swear to Christ. 
She had to be. The kid sucked. He couldn't act for shit. I mean... I don't know, man. The kid, the kid was garbage. Are you an angel? No, I'm not an angel, motherfucker. Do I look like an angel? I got wings, asshole. You fucking nit. You stupid little... Blonde-haired faggot. Fuck you. Fuck you. Put a little bowl over your fucking head and clip clip, you little bastard. Hit it in the eye. Bullshit. Fucking kid sucks. Kid sucks. He, I'm sorry, he sucks at life. Look at him now, he sucks. He knows he sucks. <sighs> I'll, I'll even give... Give give Hayden Christensen a, a a fucking nod. He, you know, he's he's okay. I like the kid. He seems like a good guy, you know. And with the little bit of shit that he had to work with, I think he did fine. As as Anakin later on. Are you an angel? No, motherfucker. Asshole. I mean, seriously. And he got Qui Gon fucking Jin with the ponytail. I mean, dude. He's, he looked like Jesus, for fuck's sake. He played by Liam Neeson, for fuck's sake. How do you... And then Darth fucking Maul. How do you fuck up with all of that greatness? How do you fuck it up? I don't understand that. Some of the choices that they did, just... I don't know, man. And what's weird about Star Wars is they go back and they say, well, George Lucas' original idea was this, that, and Like, there was this one that Han Solo was supposed to be this green-skinned alien. Do you understand how... No? No? He wanted Qui-Gon Jinn to be bald. Uh, n no? Or, no, have a mohawk, I think it was. Yeah, he was supposed to have a mohawk. I think that's... Yeah, a mohawk. Do you want, no. No. So whoever Lucas had making those decisions, they were genius because they took whatever he had and just made it better. I mean, seriously, imagine if Han Solo was an alien. How stupid that'd be. I mean, was this Guardians of the Galaxy? No. Fucking stupid. So, I mean... I don't know, maybe I, maybe Lucas was part of the problem. It's like, yeah, he comes up with good stories and good names and good concepts, but overall, he fucked it up. I mean, he just did. <sighs> Anyways, like I said, thank God for the people behind him and people who were you know trying to make it sensible. What have those guys doing freaking Star Wars, you know? Not these people with agendas and bullshit. Your only agenda should be to tell a good story. You know? And I'm sorry, I even with JJ, I don't think, told a great story. Now, there were moments of... Actually, I don't... I have some problems with Force Awakens. But ultimately, it wasn't bad. It was a good start. But this, this Last Jedi just... I don't know. It went off the deep end. It literally went off the deep end and sank like a rock. Now, they have the ability to come back and fix it. I do believe that. The couple things that I mentioned... you, Dude, I'm sorry. If you do that and you go back and watch it, it's, it would be amazing. Snoke was manipulating Luke. That's why he went nuts. Because he's tr ultimately trying to manipulate Kylo to kill the Snoke character. Turn him completely to the dark side so that he's more pliable and more easy to control and actually take over. And because if that's the case, then ultimately he's going to die because if he's being possessed, then his body's going to quickly break down like Snoke's did. And he's probably going to ultimately die. Because, again, Kylo has to freaking die. You can't just have this, oh, the balance of the force and blah, blah, blah. You can't, because the bad guys will always do bad stuff. They will always do bad things. You can't let them run amok. You can't let them run willy-nilly across the universe killing people. 
You can't. That's why you're the good guy. You have to take them out. You have to stop them. So, oh, the balance of the force, balance of the force. <sighs> this, you're not going to ever have balance of the force. Now, if you could set it up with a, the bad guy doesn't do bad stuff, maybe. But then they wouldn't be a bad guy. So, how do, again, how do you have balance of the force? How? How is that even remotely possible? You can't. Now, especially when you got all those big guns and shit where they can blow up planets. You can't just have a bad guy blowing up planets. You have to put a stop to that. So the balance of the force is, is a myth. It's like, it's not possible. Now, if it was on an individual basis where there's good in them and there's evil in them, which has been kind of established. I mean, Ray went to the dark side, literally. I mean, she literally went to the dark side. Luke's gone to the dark side. <coughs> They've all gone to the dark side on some level. Probably even Yoda, at some point, has entertained dark side thoughts. We all have that in us. So, that would be the way to go. That's how you could balance the force like, as an individual person. Like, like somebody who's, I'm going to dabble with force lightning, but not go kill a bunch of people. But then, why would you want force lightning? Because force lightning is basically to inflict damage and, and hurt other people. So, if you're going to do that, you might as well just go and kill everybody and blow planets up and shit. So, again, it really doesn't, it doesn't work. I mean, the best you could hope for is to annihilate the dark side and then have everybody kind of be neutral. That's really the only way you're going to bring balance to the Force. That's the only way it could work. Because, I mean, again, you have to stop people who are blowing up planets. You just do. That's just the thing, you know? <laughs> you can't have Alderaan, you know what I'm saying? You know, never forget. Fuck you. <sighs> Whatever. But yeah, this whole balance of the force thing, it's just not possible. It's not. You know, unless it's a spiritual thing where they're constantly fighting one another, like angels and demons and kind of concept, where it's this, this eternal struggle that just never ceases. Okay, you might be able to do that, but that's not going to translate to, you know, the actual people that are alive in the physical world, that doesn't translate very well. You know? So, I don't know. I don't know how that plays... I don't know how you can justify that. Because, again, Kyle's gonna go nuts and kill a bunch of fucking people. You saw what he did to the temple. You saw what he did probably... He probably killed some of the, the Jedi, I would assume, that Luke was training. So, what happened to them? What happens then? I don't know. Apparently somebody's got the idea, though. <sighs> but again, how do, you, how do you draw balance to the Force without... It doesn't... No. I mean... Even if, even if you balanced it out where it's, it's, everybody's kind of ho-hum, you still got bad guys who, okay... The whole point is, the more bad you do, the stronger you get in the force. Well, you're going to have people, that's addicting. You're going to have people addicted to it, like a drug. The dark side is like a drug. I mean, they're basically addicts, essentially. Because, again, the more bad they do, the more powerful they get. Now, you got somebody like Plagueis who could bring people back from the dead. How bad was that guy? I mean, we saw Palpatine, he couldn't do it. Technically, he couldn't technically do it that we know of, and he was pretty bad. Vader was pretty bad, he killed younglings for fuck's sake, yet he couldn't bring himself back from the dead. He was strong enough to, to be one with the force enough where he could turn into a ghost form, but that's about it. That's about it. Now, one of the things I'm just you, first off, they want to put a they wanted to put a joke in there. One of the things they missed out on is the Force Ghost with uh, Yoda. Yoda should have had a hairpiece. 
almost like a Donald Trump kind of hairpiece. Because if you think about it, you look at how he was, he had that little bit of scruffly little hair, and then he had less and less, and you go back to three, he had a little bit more hair. They should have, because, I mean, think about it. When Vader died, he wasn't all burnt up, he had his legs again, he was manifest whole again. Now, why would Yoda show up at age 800 when he could show up at age, you know, 45 for him, have his little hairpiece on? That would have been funny, seeing him in a hairpiece, like his hair has been restored. That would have been funny. I think they could have done something like that. They could have even done like a little joke of Donald Trump or something. That would have been funny. See, now that's humor. That's some fucking humor right there. Okay, but seriously, you put a hairpiece on that son, but it would have been hysterically funny. Especially when he's kicking and screaming and, eh, you know, that shit. That would have been funny. I mean, think about it, because he would have been restored. He would have been younger. He probably had hair at some point. Okay. It would have been funny. Again, especially if you put a Donald Trump haircut on him. Like a little blonde basket. That would have been hysterically funny. That would have been, oh my God, it was a missed opportunity right there. And that's all I'm going to say on that. That's all I'm going to say on that. Because, again, they, they... uh, it would have been funny, dude. You got a, a little part on the side. <laughs> it would have been hysterically funny. Oh, God. I could write better fucking Star Wars than these guys. You realize a deranged five-year-old could write better fan fiction than these fuckers? Uh, that's depressing. When I, when, I, when I say that aloud, that depresses me on so many fucking levels. It's like, funny. Uh Anyways, I think I'm going to get out of here. So, yeah, it comes down to disconnect. It is, it's disconnect. Yoda's disconnected from his hair. You know, everybody's, it's like everybody's disconnected. You know? And especially people like me who, Star Wars is my birth year. I was born, so I'm, you know, I'm as old as Star Wars. Actually, when did Star Wars come out? Was it, was it March? Whatever, I was born in March, so if it came out around then, or April, May, whatever the hell it was, you know, so that's a big deal to me, you know, people who grew up who were like 41, 40, 41 years old, it's like, Star Wars has been around as long as we have, it has, it's been around as long as we have, and it's just, I... They shit all over it, dude. They literally shit over it. And I don't like that. Uh, and again, people who think Lucas fucked up the, uh, the, the main tri- the first trilogy. Or not the first, well, one, two, and three. The prequels. He fucked up the prequels. If people think they, that that, what do they think about this? Because again, I am so sick and tired of all these little fucking nerds Sitting there talking about, well, if you knew better, why aren't you? Why is your name on the on the the scroll at the end, under the credits? You know why? Because the motherfuckers didn't cut me no damn check. You want to cut me a check? I write you a fucking Star Wars story. Okay. I write you a whole bunch of Star Wars stories for a check. Uh, see, the problem is, especially these little millennial fuckers, they are content. To have mediocrity, whether it's Halo 5, whether it's Call of Duty, whether it's Star Wars, whether it's Ghostbusters, they are content, whether it's WWE, they are content, Marvel Comics, to have mediocrity. And they eat it up, and like, oh, this is a great man, this is the greatest thing ever. Now, I admit, I admit, sometimes we get old and jaded. And it's like, we want what we want. And I know it sounds stupid sometimes to say, yeah, we want we want the exact same thing, but we want something different. I understand that. I get that. And sometimes it's not as constructive as it should be. In other words, we want the, the core to be the same, but we want new concepts to go along with it. Build upon it in ways that are fresh and new and actually adhere to the original lore, adhere to the original concepts, adhere to the original state. Take the original... It's like Destiny. 
you take Destiny 1, you basically cut and paste it, and then you add new stuff to it. What did they do? They said, no, fuck that. We're going to take everything that we did right, and we're going to shit over that, give you this pile of garbage, and then have no end game, and just piss everybody off. Okay. There's ways to do it. There's ways to do it so that you can have a new franchise, still, but still respect the old ways, and bring the people in with the old ways, bring them into the new stuff, and then give them something to cling on from that point. Okay. So far in the first two movies of this Star Wars new uh, trilogy, they've shit on everybody. They killed Luke, they killed... Well, they're going to have to kill Leia, obviously. They killed Han... I mean, what, 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 Chewie? What are they going to do? Are they going to string him up next? I mean, come on. They did nothing with R2. 3PO's done nothing. It's just, I don't know, man. It's sad. It is legitimately sad. And the idea that these grown adults don't care about that. They literally sit there and say, oh, this is great. We got our message out. Yeah, but your message is bullshit. Tell me a story first, and then put your political bullshit in there, you know? Sprinkle that shit in a little bit here or there. I don't even have a problem with that. When you're going to sit there and pretend that what you're doing is good, I don't know, man. I don't know, it's it's, it's bothersome. And again, I don't want to hearken on the whole, ooh, the... the the feminism stuff. I don't want to hearken on that stuff. I don't want to bitch about that stuff. But again, you did it perfectly with Leia and then ruined it with Rey. You can't have it both ways. You can't have General Leia, who's you, you've seen from day one, and she's literally risen in the ranks, literally, and you're watching her and you're going along the ride with her to where she is now versus Rey, who just... Random chick, a lot of power, yay. She's super cool. Everybody else sucks. Luke sucks. All the males suck, but she's really great, guys. That doesn't make a good story. It doesn't. You can't sit there and say that it makes a good story. And all these fucking people pissing and complaining, well, you should read the books. No, if the fucking movie isn't a standalone movie that tells a coherent fucking story, then the writer of said movie and the people who were in the part of the directing and part of the uh, uh, editing process, they suck at what they do. I shouldn't have to read extracurricular bullshit just to understand, oh, well, that's what he was trying to go for. That's bullshit. If you don't explain it, then it doesn't happen. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry. Now you can have all your comic books and your movie, your side movies and all your other bullshit, but the main crux of the concepts should be there. It's like, seriously, it's like Marvel Comics. I was reading Uncanny X-Men, and at the end they show like a, a preview, like the cover of the next issue, and it's like, Re Psylocke returns from the dead. I was like, I didn't even know she was fucking dead. She's been dead for about a year, and I didn't even know it. Yet I collect all the main X-Men comic books, yet she died in some obscure fucking title. Same thing happened to Rogue. Did Rogue die in the X-Men titles? No. Did they even mention it? No. They had a series, they had an X-Men series where it was all the, all the female characters. Which I fundamentally disagree with. Having an entire X-Men team just made up of women. Because there's a problem. There's, there's logistical problems with that. All right, for example, Star Wars or uh, Stargate. Another good example. There was an episode where Hathor, the uh, basically the queen of love, sex, and rock and roll kind of a deal, um, she came and she has she has this ability to put the men under her spell, this this pheromone that turns them into like love sick puppies and they'll do anything for her, and she's basically trying to mass produce these evil creatures that are going to take over the world and the only ones who could stop her were the females which was cool it was very cool in and of itself but the concept is there it could also work in reverse you know 
What if you had a mutant who, you know, well, shit, what if Gambit comes along, he's he's a charmer, and all of a sudden the women are like, oh, you're so great, while he's, you know, manipulating them and taking over. So, yeah, you need, you literally need diversity in that sense. You need males and females. You know? Of course, in this generation, the, the male would be half quasi-queer, and he'd be like, oh, I want to suck your dick, too, and they'd all go off and he'd rule the universe. It's stupid. But, I mean, I like the idea of an all-female team, but there, there does come a legitimate problem. What if somebody comes along, and again, if, oh, granted, we're talking X-Men as if it's real, but you got to look at it logistically, too, because it's like, again, what if somebody comes along and can manipulate all the females? You know? I don't know. What if they come along and they can manipulate all the men? Same thing. So, whatever. Anyways. What else? You know what? I, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I think this is going to be my last freaking Star Wars clip. Although, I might go through the whole series. I may have to watch the whole series again now because... Oh, whatever. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll fucking do that. Shit. Maybe I'll do that and just do a clip for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then fucking Rogue Squadron. Maybe maybe I'll just do a whole clip of that shit. I don't know. Who knows? It would, I'm not saying it's great content, but at least it'd be an upload. <clears throat> not like I'm making a freaking dime on this shit anyway. Who gives a fuck? Anyways, that's it for today. Just the disconnect. The Star Wars Disney disconnect. That's what I'm going to call this. Freaking bullshit. Give me something to cling to. Give me something to hold on to. And of course, some of the dialogues, oh, we need to kill the past and move on and blah, 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 blah. And that's literally what they're doing. No. No, you don't You don't need to kill the past. You need to keep the past there. If you're like saying, well, fuck my grandparents, fuck them. Yeah, well, if it wasn't for your grandparents, you wouldn't be here. Guess what? If it wasn't for Luke... Han and Leia, all your little tweener characters wouldn't be here. All your little feminist agenda bullshit wouldn't be here. And guess what? If it wasn't for fans like me and millions of other people who love the freaking franchise and actually give a damn about these characters that you're just raping, then guess what? You wouldn't be selling your toys, which obviously there's not. You wouldn't be making your freaking movies. You wouldn't be doing any of that stuff. None of you fuckers have a job. You know? I mean, if the first one was just a good movie and went nowhere, guess what? You wouldn't have sequels and prequels and whatever else there is. Spinoffs and this one. You wouldn't have any of that stuff. If it wasn't for people like me and other people, and listen, I can understand that nobody's going to agree on the same thing all the time, so fine. Some people loved, you know, some people loved the movie. I agree. I disagree and call them idiots, but that's neither here nor there, especially if you enjoy mediocrity, that movie's mediocre. There's some moments where it could shine, but as far as overall story, they've done nothing. The, the two main things that you give a fuck about, Ray's lineage and Snoke, they shit all over and like, ha fuck you. Now again, if it's a ruse for a greater story in Nine... Then looking back, okay, cool. They they basically strung us along, fucked us over, and it's like, you know, and then made up for it later. And they could. They could do that. And then you look back, it's it's cool. It's like, you know, it's kind of like all those times where, like, they were finally going to tell Wolverine's, uh, his origin story. And it's like, because I remember uh, the original series, I think it was like number 48, 49, and 50, they were going to do this thing where he goes back to Weapon X and they're going to tell the story and it's going to be great. And they basically tell you nothing. They basically tell you nothing. They lead up. Basically, he's got more questions than answers before he started on his quest to find his past. And what did they do later on? This stupid, idiot, tweener, agenda bullshit, Marvel Studio, Disney bullshit. what they do? Went along and tell you a freaking origin story and it's complete garbage. But hey, whatever. 
Now, to be fair, that it's technically pre-Disney, but I think it, it was. Yeah, it was pre-Disney. But it's still in the same mindset of, oh, we got a political agenda, blah, blah, blah. Oh, get rid of all the old white guys, because the old white guys, yeah, nobody cares about them. We'll give you all these fucking tweener characters that have no freaking substance, whatever. Give me a break. Again, Ray. She, Ray is another one. She has no substance. She really doesn't. She has no lineage. Like, to the past. Like, there's no connection to the past. And if there was, now, yeah, you might transfer some of that over to her. And they don't want to do that because, oh, they want her to be this unique character. Well, what's unique about a nobody? I mean, okay, I get the fact that, okay, anybody can use the Force, or the Force is something that could be, you know, found in almost anybody, so on and so forth. But yeah, guess what? Not everybody's going to use the Force. Not everybody's going to be able to do that. So, it's just, I don't know. I, I... Nine has got his work cut out. JD's got his work cut out for him. I don't know if he's up to it. He is a vagina man at the end of the day, and I don't know if he's up to it. Because right now, you can't just do a political hit piece of, well, this, that, and the other, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's not what Star Wars is about. And that's certainly not what Star Wars 9 is about. Star Wars 9 is about fixing the fucking problems. Fixing the incoherent bullshit of the last storm. The last Jedi. You, th they have to turn this shit around. They have to. Because if they don't... I don't know. I'm not interested. I, I don't know how interested I will be in future programming from them. I, I just, I don't know. Because you got to win back the fans. Okay, this the old school fan. Now, yeah, you got the new school fans. But again, do the new school, it's like, it, seriously, it's like Halo 5. You love Halo 5. Do you really love Halo? I'd argue no. Because Halo 5 is not like original Halo. It's not. Halo, now, some people hated Halo. Fine. Some people hate Call of Duty. Fine. But you love it for what it is. If you love it, you love it for what it is. You don't love it for what you think it should be. Like, oh, it should be this hybrid between Call of Duty and uh, whatever. And we love that. Well, guess what? The numbers are against you. People aren't playing it anymore. People, The whole franchise, the whole Halo franchise is dead. The only ones who are playing it are the people who like this new hybrid bullshit style. Which, guess what? They could get that type of gameplay and that type of style from any other fucking first-person shooter on the market. It's a fact. It is an absolute fact. So what Halo used to do that was unique has now been crapped on to the point of being unrecognizable. So again, if you like Halo 5, you don't really like Halo. You like Episode 9... Or episode 8, you don't really like Star Wars. Because Star Wars is Anakin Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. Leia. Han. Chewie. Those are, those are Star Wars. Rose? Rose? Rose is Star Wars now? They could make her into something. I don't think she's earned the right to be you know, a major player. She's kind of goofy. She's got a bad haircut. She looks like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Not in any good way. <laughs> it's like... But I don't want to shit all the character. Hey, and like I said... You want to put in all your bullshit at the beginning, like the first 15 minutes is like, oh, look at this, look in this cockpit, oh, look, there's a black guy, yay, oh, look, there's an Asian lady, yay, we got our diversity checklist, dun 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 Okay, fine, fine. But then, I, listen, I applaud Dickhead for at least taking one of the tweener characters and trying to make a story out of it. I applaud the fact he did that. I appreciate that. That, okay, you were going to tell this, this feminist story about this young woman who blah, 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 and it's, it's all it's about. Well, fine. Okay. And I give him credit for trying. I will give him credit for trying. I'm not saying he succeeded, 
I'm not saying the Rose character is anything to write home about. She's forgettable. Am I going to remember her next time? Am I going to remember her in 9? Which means probably not. Which means they're going to have to take time to re-establish her for that movie and give her something to do, which means it's going to be a waste of freaking opportunity and a waste of freaking time, especially for the stuff that we actually care about. So it's a little bit of a catch-22. Now, I understand, okay, we've established a new character, and we want to run with a new character, okay. But I mean, seriously, if, you, if they did a standalone Rose story, how many people are going to give a damn? I mean, you could maybe make me care, but it'd have to be in a grander scheme. You'd have to have some of the other characters show up. You can't just have random character Rose be like, oh, I got my, I got a whole series now. <laughs> no. No, you're going to have to bring in Ray. You're going to have to bring in Kyle. You're going to have to do something. You're going to have to bring in the characters that people care about. All that argue. I mean, really, the only one that's mildly that you mildly care about is kind of Kylo. He's about the only one that really that maybe BB-8. That's about it. I mean, and again, the only thing saving the Ray character is Rit is Daisy. She's the only one, just because of her presence, is the only thing saving that character. Because that character has zero story. Has zero likability. Has zero. Is there's nothing there. There's literally no there there. There's no connection. There's no interest. Again, it's just Daisy's good at what she does. That's the only thing keeping her around. That's the only thing keeping that character relevant. That's it. And if it was not for her, if 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 a lesser person was acting it. I don't think anybody would give a damn. Again, contrast her with Rose. Yeah, okay, the, the, the story is okay. I mean, again, I applaud them for trying to take something. They're trying to shove another, you know, purposeful female character on to us. Well, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking that. But you clearly see their agenda. They're clearly doing it in the sense of, you know, they didn't tell more Finn's story, they told this random female character because we want to get more females in there. And don't get me wrong, there's that, I have nothing against that. But when 99% of the, the film is, okay, the, the men are stupid and the women are, you know... Whatever. Whatever. I know it doesn't matter to some people, but it's just when you're blatant about it and that's all you can see, that pisses me off. I don't want to just see that. I want to zone out and forget about stuff. And be like, okay, she's a cool character. He's a cool character. Oh, what he did was badass or whatever. You know? That's what I want. That's what I want. I don't want to be preached to. I, I don't want to, you know, you're in. You want to do that, you do it subtly. You do it, you know. And... It, the best times those things work is, again, when they do it subtly and you're like, was there a deeper meaning behind that? Did it mean something else? Was this like a metaphor for the Vietnam War or something? That's good stuff. That is interesting because it gets you thinking. You can watch the movie and say, I liked it or I didn't like it, whatever, or it was good, but there was a few problems, or it was just fucking phenomenal, whatever. But then when you watch it three, four, five, six times... Again, was that a metaphor for the war? Was that a metaphor for German tanks? Or was that, you know, something? And then you, you, you internalize it, you struggle with it, and you're like, and you talk to other people about it. That's how it fucking is supposed to work. Not like, oh, by the way, here's a female. <laughs> Enjoy it. We're feminists. The force is, the force is female. And here's some more female characters for you. Enjoy them. Again, why? What am I... How am I supposed to be invested in Rose when I don't give a fuck? How am I supposed to be invested in Ray when I don't give a fuck? I'm invested in Leia because I give a fuck. Do so you, see, you see what I'm saying? You care. I am only invested in Ray because of Daisy. She's the only reason. I am only invested in Luke because it's Luke. And again... 
The only two that you're mildly invested in are Kylo and BB-8. That's it. Maybe a little bit of Finn on the side. Are you invested in Chewie? Has Chewie had any major role? Chewie's a fucking staple. Yet, yeah, nope. Are you invested in R2? Nope. R2's a staple. Nope. 3PO? Nope. Lando? Where the fuck is Lando? I, men I mentioned him earlier. You invested in him? No. That's racist. Shit, you want to you want to get cute, want to get all political? That's fucking racist. I mean, the black dude in the Cloud City, that's racist, dude. Where's my Lando? Me too, Lando. That's what should be a hashtag. Me too, Lando. Or where's Lando? Fucking bullshit. I mean, seriously. What, I gotta read another I gotta read sixteen novels to find out oh he's he's off somewhere or he died or something happened. I shouldn't have to read a fucking novel to understand where where he came from or where he is or where he's what he's doing. It's stupid. It's stupid. Whatever. It pisses me off. I, I the problem is I get angry over stupid shit and I shouldn't, but I do. Because again, they had the potential to tell a damn good story. They did, and they didn't. Now, again, they can fix it. I think they can fix it. You go through the stuff that I talked about, they can fix the shit. You fix the shit. You make it fucking great. Make it, make Star Wars great again. Make Halo great again. Fuck you. Dude, if, I'm sorry. If they tweak those two things that I said, where Snoke was manipulating, uh, manipulating uh, Luke... As well as Kylo, he comes back on some level as, let's say, a force vampire that basically just sucks life out of the people that he possesses. That could really be fucking cool. Because you're talking about an eternal bad guy that... See, now that would be cool because you would have an ongoing thing... You have this eternal struggle with this eternal bad guy who can't be killed. So generation after generation after generation, blah, 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 blah. So it's like, okay, Luke Skywalker transitions into the Ray generation. Ray generation, she's eventually going to get older. Going to transition into another. It's like constantly, it's almost like Zelda where it's like Ganon. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, where Ganon keeps coming back and there's always going to be a link that rises up. I like that. I think that could work. I do. I think it could definitely work. But you got to do it. You got to pull the trigger on something like that. Because if you don't, then what you're left with is just a pile of horse shit. And that's that's what it is. <sighs> now, I will admit my initial belief about the Last Jedi has soured over the days as I started to think about it and I've heard other complaints about it and uh, I mean is it completely fair that I'm now I don't know I'm trying to be as fair as I can be because like was there good stuff in there again I like the fact that they tried to tell a story with Rose especially after the whole diversity thing at the beginning I, I appreciate that unlike you know, Iceman, who they're going to turn gay randomly after 65 fucking years and then tell stories that are boring as fuck. You know, hey, as long as he's sucking dick, we're all good. I mean, that's not a good story, dude. It's just not. And then having, then having an entire crux of the movie on a mission that does nothing, that it amounts to nothing. I... I mean, essentially, that was that's the equivalent of WWE trying to have a 16-hour WrestleMania just to get everybody on the card. I mean, honest to God, WrestleMania is going to be about four to five hours. Plus, you got at least a two-hour pre-show. That's like seven, eight hours worth of fucking wrestling just to get everybody on the card. That's what that whole sequence was, that whole casino sequence was just to get everybody on the card. Get everybody booked on the card. That's all it was. Because you take that out, what does Finn have? Finn had nothing. 
He had no role in this at all. None. Yeah, you got to team up with Rose. Okay, fine. Fine. I don't even, again, it doesn't even bother me. It just bothers me that the story went nowhere. They could have fixed that if, yeah, they got the code breaker, they got the codes, they did what they had to do, but oops, it's too late, they had to flee anyway. You know, because that would have been interesting. Because if you if you watch Star Wars as a collective, you've got two or three plots that go on, and they all get to the point where everybody's captured, it looks dire, things are going to shit the bed, and then all of a sudden, 180, it starts to turn around and, you know... Like, like the Gungans were captured, um, and Padme's forces were captured, and Qui-Gon has just been killed. You know, and all of a sudden, like I said, it starts to turn around, blah, 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 and you know, it ends up happily ever after at the end. Well, you don't really see that. You don't, you didn't, see, that was not in this. This was not Star Wars in that sense. You had a storyline that was supposed to be like a, a second alternative to how do we save everybody? So Poe was going um, along trying to say, okay, well, this woman doesn't have a plan. And let's cut the shit. Her plan was not even really a plan. Her plan essentially was let's get close enough and we'll try to outrun them. And of course, you get the medical frigate who runs out of energy, so it kind of falls behind and gets shot. I, I, I don't know. Now, if they had turned her, let's say, into a spy, the purple haired chick, into a spy, okay, that could have worked. Or they turned even Rose into a spy, who then gets redeemed at the end, that could have made sense too. It, again, if Rose. Rose was the spy or something that would have made her interesting and then she starts to feel for Finn it would have made sense and like oh I was you know I was doing this for the you know first order or whatever the fuck they are and now you know blah 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 that would have been a good story that would have been something of interest just as random oh I, I fell in love with you after 13 hours give me a break give me a break so stupid so dumb so dumb. That's just bad storytelling, dude. The idea of this fucker is getting paid, this, this Ryan fucker, Rain, Ruin, whatever the fuck his name is, he's getting paid mega bucks to write a shitty ass fucking story that makes no damn sense at all. Well, if you can do better, why don't you? Because they're not giving me money, motherfucker. You give me a paycheck, I can write you a fucking story. Or at least give you an outline that's halfway coherent. Swear to God. Swear to God, you know, not asking for much. It's just a little coherency, a little literacy, and something that's actually halfway entertaining. Now, okay, was The Last Jedi entertaining? Maybe on some level. Was it entertaining in all the right ways? No. Did I, did, I mean, did I enjoy the movie? I, enjoy, I enjoyed seeing the, some of the characters. I enjoyed seeing Rey again. Even though the character's boring, again, Ridley, or uh, Daisy, I enjoyed seeing her. I did enjoy seeing Kylo a little bit. I enjoyed seeing R2, even 3PO. I definitely enjoyed seeing Leia. I definitely enjoyed seeing Mark Hamill and Luke, even though they shit all over the character. So, yeah, that was entertaining. That was fun. As far as what they did with him, no. <clears throat> now, what they should have done, <clears throat> and this is stupid, although technically, eh, but they could have fixed it. They could have changed it. They should have had Leia stay on the ship, and then the purple-haired chick, you know, because she could have gone on into Nine, almost taking Leia's place as general. That would have been better. Now, obviously, I don't think they were anticipating Carrie Fisher going to die. <clears throat> but now, imagine if Carrie Fisher character had blasted his ship through the Dreadnought. That would have been a badass way to go out. Instead, 
you waste that really cool sacrifice on a character nobody really liked that was just a stupid bitch anyway because she wouldn't tell Poe what the fucking story was, wouldn't tell him what the, you know, that there was actually a plan, wouldn't tell him any of that stuff, and was just being a bitch. And she gets this really great send-off. <clears throat> Where, you know, Princess Leia, she would have stayed behind. And the fact that she didn't stay behind, that bothers me. That completely bothers me, because Captain... Well, technically, I guess she was sort of... I guess the one that was still in charge, because she was unconscious. So she was still in charge. Leia never took command again. Which, again, that was a missed opportunity as well. She should have been like, Hey, I'm taking command again. You get on the shuttle, get the fuck out. I'm going to stay with the ship. And then she takes out the dreadnought that way. That would have been fucking great. And they'd be like, okay, that's how you kill her off. Awesome. Great. Fucking great. But they opted not to do that. So now you got the purple-haired chick who's dead. Who, again, if they fleshed out her story, could have been interesting. Because, hey, you know what? People fuck up, you know? I don't know what type of leadership experience she had. This could have been her first time as, you know, the general. And maybe she's like, hey, you know what, I, maybe I did fuck up. Maybe maybe I should have let Poe in on the secret, or at least told him and reassured him, reassured my my the people who are under me, reassured them that we, we got this handle, even though, you know, it's dire situation. I don't know, but God forbid... You'd have to have a strong female lead to admit that they were wrong. Again, there's a problem. You know? I'd argue that she'd be more of a strong female lead if she admitted she fucked up. Uh, that would have been, you know, hey. Admit you're wrong. Admit you fucked up. Instead, they make, again, they make Poe look like a fool. He goes out there, he gets a bunch of people killed. At the beginning. And then he goes, he sends the other two on this wild goose chase that ends up ultimately meaning nothing. I don't know. <sighs> Anyways, I'm done. You got a two hour freaking clip. I hope you enjoy it. This probably going to be the last one for a while because I'm, I'm getting Star Wars out. And, you know. Anyways, fuck you.